Hello people, in this video let us look at uh, hydronephrosis viva questions. This is surgery um, clinics. So we are looking at the questions. So basically here is the case presentation for you. A 35 year old gentleman, he has pain in the right loin okay, and he also has um, mass swelling. You can see here swelling. Swelling in the right loin for the same duration. Okay, That is what duration? Last one year. Okay. So in examination, everything else is negative. So we are leaving that. Just look at what this person is having. See, we have drawn here the right kidney hydronephrosis, which is on the topic basis itself, you know. So basically on examination, you are seeing that there is slight fullness in the right lumbar region, isn't it? And also the renal angle is full. Which side? The right side renal angle is full. Okay. The right kidney is palpable, slight mobility of the swelling and the hand can be insinuated between the swelling and the right coastal margin okay where is the coastal margin somewhere here so uh, and there is a on the swelling the percussion is on percussion the swelling is dull and there is a band of resonance in front of the swelling okay when they mean front of the swelling what do they mean Okay, now what is the diagnosis? It is right-sided hydronephrosis. What is the differential for a hydronephrosis? Guys, the differentials for a hydronephrosis, it could be a simple cyst of kidney. Okay, it should, could be a simple... Hydronephrosis is basically what? There's going to be backflow of urine because of which urine stasis here. There will be swelling of the kidney because of the urine stasis, right? So that will be hydronephrosis. So it could be just be a simple cyst of the kidney. That is the differential. Polycystic kidney disease. So polycystic kidney disease it can be. Uh, and if it is bilateral, okay, it could be bilateral. Then <coughs> it could be tuberculous pyonephrosis. There could be pus here. So not just urine, there could be some pus collection here. So tuberculous pyonephrosis, parapelvic cyst. Okay. Again, cyst, 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 so many words have cyst here. Then hydatid cyst. So this is again because of the parasitic infestation, right? Hydatid cyst, it can be retroperitoneal cyst, retroperitoneal. Some behind the peritoneum, there is a cyst. Carcinoma of the kidney. See here, this uh, cyst word, differential diagnosis, everything has cyst. Simple cyst. Polycyst, parapelvic cyst, hydatid cyst, retroperitoneal cyst. Otherwise, anyways, anybody will say uh, CA uh, carcinoma kidney, right? For anything and everything, we see that. And always one tuberculosis, we will add standard things that we do, right? So, other than that, everything you have understood. So, this is it. Okay, so these are the differentials for hydronephrosis. Now let's move on. Next question. What investigation will you suggest in this patient? Yes, you would like to do ultrasound. Yes, everybody will say that. Is it just ultrasound? They didn't mention anything else. So how will ultrasound help you? You will be able to... You will be able to say that is it actually the kidney from where the swelling is coming? What is the degree of dilatation of the pelvic calcial system? Is there any calculus in the kidney? Opposite kidney also you can examine. And this is um, non-ionizing ionizing radiation, quite safe. Right? What other investigations after ultrasound you can check for uh, the kidney function, renal function, always renal function, blood urea and creatinine you will do, right? And also an IV nephro, uh, sorry, urogram. Urography they are doing. Okay. Is this IVU urography same as nephrography? Is there a word like that? Okay. Intravenous urography. How will this help? Guys, what are we looking at? Listen, we are looking at uh, bedside clinics and surgery. We are looking at hydronephrosis topic from this textbook. Okay. So, we're just looking at all the viva questions that could come. So, what are we looking now? How will IV urography help? Before that, let us just... Uh, here we have to add what investigations will you suggest? You can suggest a renal functional test, ultrasound of the abdomen and IVU that is intravenous urography. Okay. Then there are so many other things. Wait, we'll tell you. So here we are adding so many other uh, investigations because they did not write it correctly here. So you have ultrasound of the abdomen, I, uh, intravenous uh, urography, uh, renal function test that is urea creatinine level uh, of the blood, right? Then DTPA scan that is diethyl. Uh, what is this? Diethylene tri diethylene triamine pentaacetic acid, isn't it? 
so this scan you can do then you can do a retrograde pilograph and a CCT that is contrast enhanced CT okay so many things you can do which they didn't suggest here they're going in order kind of a thing okay now here we checked what are the uses of doing this IV urography so basically you can check the dilatation etc you can see if there's any obstruction also right okay then there is something called as this DTPA scan diethylene triamine pentaacetic acid scan so they have shown a photo here is it <clears throat> of hydronephrosis so isotope count see if there is a normal kidney it's the red line actually they should have put a green but anyways normal kidney is a this graph here and the obstruction is there here so the isotope count in obstruction is not falling so that's what they are here they are giving the radio uh, radioactive substance right the, and the radioactive substance will remain trapped okay proximal to the obstruction and it will not get cleared even after you give furosemide so this is what it is proximal to the obstruction the radioactive substance substance will get trapped yes what are we looking at in this topic we are looking at uh, hydronephrosis so just uh, take a recap here we are looking at a case so basically we have suggested uh, so many types of uh, investigations right so now let us move on okay the next viva question is if the hydronephrosis is due to a pelvic pelvi ureteric junction obstruction what will you do so here you can see that there is a pelvi ureteric junction obstruction now there is a dilated renal pelvis because of this pelvi ureteric junction obstruction so what will you do the answer here is a anderson heinz pyeloplasty okay anderson heinz pyeloplasty look at this guys so what are they doing here so they are uh, bringing this up looks like so they are removing the obstruction part and they are bringing the unobstructed part up. That's what it looks like. Anderson Heinz pyeloplasty. Plasty. So this is a type of dismembered pyeloplasty. Okay, so there are other types of things. Dismembered pyeloplasty is the Anderson Heinz pyeloplasty. Non-dismembered will have some other type of pyeloplasty. Okay. Next question, guys. Are you ready? Which topic are we looking at? hydronephrosis okay viva questions now look at this this anderson um, heinz pyeloplasty can be done by a lumbar approach or a laparoscopic approach etc but nowadays what is taking uh, uh, what is becoming more famous is the minimal axis surgery okay what they are doing here they are passing a balloon balloon is passed how either through the in a nephroscope or by putting it up through the ureteric orifice okay so that is how they are doing this is very popular now okay but the long term results they don't know yet okay so balloon what is it balloon okay now let's move on what is hydronephrosis okay so better late than never they are asking this viva question guys what is hydronephrosis it is defined as the aseptic Tick dilatation of the pelvic calcium system of the kidney due to partial or com complete obstruction of the outflow of urine. We already told you. So what will happen here? This is the kidney and this is the ureter. So there is obstruction somewhere. So the urine stasis is happening here. But this is not infected yet, right? So this is a aseptic dilatation of the pelvic calcium system. So this will be causing swelling of the kidney, right? So, dilatation of the pelvic calcium system, this is hydronephrosis, okay. This can happen because of partial or complete obstruction of the outflow of the urine, okay. If there is unilateral hydronephrosis, what is the important cause? So, it could be because of a renal stone or a carcinoma or a stricture or a congenital stenosis, some obstruction to the outflow of urine or it can be happening that some lesion is there adjacent to the ureter. So, adjacent to the ureter, what is there? the colon right the cervix prostate so prostate enlargement can cause uh, urinary retention that so much backflow can cause hydronephrosis right so many things they have mentioned here retroperitoneal fibrosis etc some things which are near the ureter okay all these are unilateral they are saying if it is bilateral why do you think both the kidneys are affected guys very good guess guys because if bilaterally it has to be affected something that is here which is affecting both right so it could be some prostate enlargement or some urethral uh, the meatal stenosis the urethral valve having some problem right the urethral stricture this is the urethra right from the bladder to outside the world some urethral stricture 
like we already told you prostatic enlargement bad bladder's nick this is the nick of the bladder right there could be some bladder nick obstruction due to some congenital stenosis or marian's disease okay or post operative scarring so you understood bilateral means it will be something to do with the bladder and beyond okay which can affect both the kidneys so here there's problem so there's back flow to both the kidneys and both are affected okay then look at this question guys we are looking at hydronephrosis focus here so basically how will this uh, patient present this guy who has all these problems of hydronephrosis how will he present you already know that he will come with lump in the uh, loin <coughs> pain in the loin all that we told you loin is what from the lower costal margin till where till the asi is it anterior superior iliac spine so basically the kidney region there is something called as a dietal crisis dietal crisis what is it d i e t diet l dietal crisis so basically here he will have pain see first he'll have pain then a lump will appear after the pain and then after a few hours what will happen he will pass large quantities of urine and then the pain and swelling will disappear let's read this again after an attack of renal colic a lump appears in the loin and after the few hours of the pain the swelling disappears with the passage of large quantities of urine so he'll pass urine and the swelling will disappear so that is the dietal uh, crisis so you can understand hydronephrosis he will pass urine the swelling will disappear that kind of makes sense right now let us move on to the complications of hydronephrosis this is the last viva question it's very specific to hydronephrosis so because of hydronephrosis what can happen so here's the kidney a lot of urine backflow pelvic calcium system dilated urine 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 so what can happen infection very good it can lead to pyonephrosis it can become a non functioning kidney right because of all this back pressure and the kidney will stop functioning right so there will be thinning of the cortex etc and finally the kidney will stop working chronic renal failure okay that's it this is what you will have to say are the complications of hydronephrosis what are they pyonephrosis i would say non functioning kidney renal failure okay pyonephrosis and renal failure are the complications of hydronephrosis okay so that's it guys we have seen this case of hydronephrosis we'll meet you in the next video bye bye